<clears throat> All right, what's up, everybody? So, I have an opportunity to teach because I'm being challenged. <laughs> um, so, one of my uh, listeners, viewers, I don't know if they are subscribed or not, um, has been um, arguing, debating with me in the comments regarding whether or not um, you can lose your salvation or whether or not your salvation can be incomplete. And I thought I might as well just turn this into a video, a teaching, because, um, you know, maybe some other people can benefit. Maybe this would be edifying for others, okay? So I did prepare a little bit, um, but we're going to pray for any further revelation from the Holy Spirit. Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua. I just invite your presence, Lord. As always, I invite your conviction and your revelation. I plead the blood of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth over the camera, the phone, the technology, this camera, this channel, this ministry, over my body, soul, spirit, and domain, and all that that includes. I ask Father God Yahweh, will you please put a hot coal over my tongue to prevent me from saying anything that is not true, anything that is not coming from you? I invite further, con further conviction and revelation for myself and those listening. And um, we just invite your presence, Lord. We just say, come and have your way, Lord. I invite you to speak through me as your mouthpiece, as your teacher, Lord. Um, and I just ask, Lord, that you would put your anointing on this video and have it reach those who need it. And that it would be edifying to your people. <clears throat> I ask for this all in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. And Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I ask in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please prevent me from forgetting anything, including the analogy that you told me to use. I ask for this all in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. Okay, so I just did a video about carnal Christians, people that are in the inner court, they've, they've, you know, um, received Jesus as their savior, but they haven't really gone any further in terms of intimacy, making him Lord, going into consecration and sanctification and seeking inner healing and deliverance and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, a lot of these people, if not all of them, um, they approach things with their own carnal logic, their own comprehension and, um, a lot of them just like actually trying to have a conversation with the Lord to them is like they don't even go there and they're not interested in going there. And I got to tell you, that's not true Christianity, okay? Using the Bible as just something that you can debate over intellectually, that's not Christianity, okay? Yes, God's word is important. It is vital. It is imperative. It is pertinent. And it is definitely part of the relationship with the Lord, absolutely. But you need the rhema word of God, not just the logos word of God, okay? The scripture is the logos word of God. Rhema is when God speaks to you in the here and now, okay? You need that, okay? You need to be in deep intimacy with him, okay? Maybe I need to define, thank you, Holy Spirit, intimacy. You know what? Let's pull that up. What, let's, let's see what Google says the definition of intimacy is. Close familiarity or friendship, closeness. A private, cozy atmosphere, an intimate act, especially sexual intercourse. Well, the Lord did give me an analogy that we're going to close with, but um, this definition doesn't really do justice, I don't think, here. It's not really a sufficient definition for what we are trying to get across here. Um, because a lot of people, they hear intimacy, and that's what they think. They think physical, body-level intimacy. And yes, there is such thing. But there is soul level intimacy and there is spirit level intimacy, okay? You need to be having <clears throat> um, soul and spirit level intimacy with the Lord, okay? All right, Lord, where do you want to begin? So we are going to get into scripture. And then we're going to close with the analogy that the Lord told me to use ultimately. And I know that there's people are still going to argue and you know what? I don't know what to tell you on that because I am a prophetess. I am a teacher. This is what the Lord has told me. And I'm not the only one. I'm in good company of many, many other prophets and teachers that God has told them the same thing. Okay? So, 
Lord, where do we want to begin here? So, um, just for a reference, we're going to go to 1 Samuel 16, 14. Now the spirit of the... Actually, let, let me go down to the New King James Version. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. I believe the Lord told me that Saul lost his salvation. Hence, he lost his appointment as king. Okay. Um, now, you can argue... Technically, you can argue anything you want until Christ returns, until the White Throne Judgment Day, okay? You can do whatever you want. It's your free will decision. Now, where that lands you for the rest of eternity, that's another question, okay? So I'm just going to reference that. I'm just going to throw that out there. And close that out now, okay? The next scripture that I want to go into is... Philippians 2.12, where it says, actually, let me, let's turn there. To work out your salvation with fear and trembling, basically, right? That's, I've got that one pretty much memorized. Of course, I can't find it now. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more in my absence, Paul is so verbose, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, let's take a look at that. A long time ago, I was listening to a sermon, and I always took it for granted that this pastor knew what he was talking about, but today I actually went and looked it up and verified it for myself so that I can teach it, because I don't want to teach something if I haven't pressed in and done some research and asked the Lord about it. My goodness, where, why am I not finding? Because I, I wrote it all down here. And it, anyway, what I'm saying is to go look up, here it is. Okay, that's right, I had a bookmark. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, okay, so Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, at the end of the verse, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, so if you go look that up, so that book of Philippians was written in Greek, and you go and you look up what that means in Greek, okay? Right here, it says that in the Greek, it means to work fully, to finish, to finish, to fashion, now, the sermon that I listened to, the pastor back then said that it meant to prove or to manifest. And let me just go off on a side tangent for, real quick, okay? People, again, with, have the, the spirit of religiosity and they hear certain words and they just lose their minds. Manifest, okay? We need to start redeeming vocabulary back for the kingdom of God. Just because New Age took a certain word and put a spin on it, put their own definition, uh, you know, they attached their own definition to it, or actually, it, it's not even that they changed the definition. It's just that they're in a different realm. They're outside the boundaries of the kingdom of God. Okay? Manifest, you know what? Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. Let's just read the definition of what manifest means. Manifest. Definition. Here we go. Manifest. Clear or obvious to the eye or mind. Display or show a quality or feeling by one's acts or appearance. To demonstrate. Okay? So as a verb, to manifest means to demonstrate. Okay? This, this word is part of the English language. It does not only belong to the kingdom of darkness. It does not only belong to new age. In and of itself, it has its own definition. Now, can something manifest in the kingdom of God? Yes. Can the Holy Spirit manifest? Yes. Just because the devil has his own counterfeit or his, his own counterpart stuff in his kingdom doesn't mean that it wasn't originally in the kingdom of God. Okay? This is what we need to really grasp here, people that are in the inner court, okay? Anyway, so the, this, the sermon I heard years ago was that 
To work out your own salvation in this verse meant to prove or to manifest. So I, I just went and looked it up, and it says here to work fully, to finish, to fashion. And then um, I went and clicked on another link, and on here it says uh, to effect by labor, to achieve, to work out, to bring about. Okay, so to finish, to achieve. So what does that imply? It implies that your salvation can indeed be incomplete. And that is why the author of the book of, of Philippians, which I believe was Paul, right? This is part of the epistles, his letters. Um, that is why he says here, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That means that you are to go into the Holy of Holies. You are to go before the throne of God, which is also his judgment seat, the courtroom of God. You are to go with reverence. You are to go with respect and fear and reverence of the Lord and say, Lord, I want to be counted worthy, right? Which is other scripture that, that we can reference. Pray to count yourself worthy, okay? <clears throat> you get my train of thought here. Um, so all of this implies that there is some work to be done. It's not just, oh, I receive Jesus as my savior and that's it. Because what that is, is you show up on the wedding day and that's it. You don't go home with the bridegroom and consummate the marriage. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. That's my closing argument that God told me to use, okay? Now, what else? What else we got here? Um, that's that, that's that. Now, let's go to the book of Revelation. Chapter 20. Revelation, chapter 20. We're just going to start reading in verse 11, but what we're going to look at is verse 12 and 13. Okay, and this is under the subtitle of the Great White Throne Judgment. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. Each one of us has a book. And book pretty much means a, a record that heaven is keeping of every single decision we have ever made. Okay? And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Okay, so it's saying that on the day of judgment... Every individual person, every individual soul's record is being opened. Everything you've ever decided with your free will is boom, right there. It's opened up. It's being laid out for, for, for everybody, okay? Most importantly, Jesus, okay? Now, that was verse 12. Now, verse 13, I, I prayed about this before I came on here. Verse 13 is unpacking verse 12, okay? Verse 13, the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. Now, before we even get to the works part, I want you to comprehend this in context, how it was written, how God means it, okay? So, let's go back to verse 12 to make sure you're comprehending this correctly, okay? And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which, which were written in the books, okay? Now, let's just put aside the, uh, the being judged by their works. Let's just put that on the shelf for a minute. We're not going to focus on that right now. We're just going to talk about what is this verse um, saying? It's saying that, okay, God is now judging everybody, okay? God is now judging everybody. He's got the book of life of those who, are, who have made him Lord. They are in the Holy of Holies. They have intimacy with him. They, during their physical lifetime, while they were still breathing, they made a decision to pursue him, make him Lord, 
pursue consecration, sanctification, deliverance, and most importantly of all, they decided to surrender and submit to him, be meek. Meek means to submit. In all areas of their life, they sought him. They sought intimacy with him. They had conversation with him. They sought conviction and revelation from him and asked him what his will was so that they could submit to it above their own will. Okay? Those are the people that are in the book of life. Okay? So we're being told that, okay, so now judgment is taking place. Now, in verse 13, it's just breaking down where are all these people coming from. Well, some of them came from the sea. Some of them came from death. Some of them came from Hades. Okay? Now, I don't claim to completely comprehend the distinction that God is making here, but he makes it in scripture more than once. That there's death and there's Hades and so on and so forth. I'm not going to question God, but he's basically saying that, that souls were coming from three different places. The sea, death, and Hades. Okay? And, it's, and now, now we're going to go back to, this, to the point of this video. Okay? They were being judged according to what? To their works. To their works. It says it both in verse 12 and again in verse 13. Each one according to his works. So, if we go back to Philippians, the verse I was just referencing, what did it say? Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Why the fear and trembling? Because you're going to be judged by those works on the day of judgment, on the day of the great white throne judgment. Okay, now we go a little bit further. In Revelation, the very last chapter, chapter 22, Jesus speaks. Chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every one according to his works. Okay? Now, in all of these verses, so we've just listed off three verses here in Revelation. We got the verse in Philippians. Does it say according to them receiving Jesus as the Messiah? Does it say receiving Jesus as Savior or the Christ? Does it say... <laughs> Do you get my point? Okay? Now, I know. I know I'm still going to have people arguing with me. Now, here's the ultimate analogy that God wanted me to make. Okay? And I know I'm still going to have people arguing, whatever, but... In our world, okay, our court system is based off of the courtroom of God. The courtroom of heaven, okay? Which is God's judgment seat, his, his throne, okay? But in down here on earth, if you... Now, we are the bride of Christ, right? He's the bridegroom. We are the bride, okay? If you have a man and a woman who both show up and get married on the wedding day, whether, whatever, courthouse, church, whatever, okay? Point is, they, they both show up physically. They say their vows, okay? They, enter, they, they, they say with their lips a covenant to each other, okay? So yes, you can, con you, you can confess that Jesus is your Savior and that you receive him as your Savior, as your Christ, as your Messiah. But if that bride does not go home with that bridegroom, with that groom, and consummate that marriage, okay, which means, yes, the physical intimacy, okay, if that bride does not go home with that groom, and consummate that marriage. Later on, if that bridegroom, that groom, okay, the, the husband, goes to court and says to the judge, my wife, my bride, never came home with me. She was never intimate with me. She was never close with me. She never consummated our marriage, judge, what is the judge going to say? The judge is going to say, well, then you have legal grounds for a divorce or an annulment, right? Because that marriage 
was never justified. It was never completed. It was never finished. It was never fulfilled. It was never achieved. Okay? And let me also say, and I know I'm going to have people arguing with me on this, okay? But God told me that in his eyes, what constitutes marriage in his eyes is sexual intercourse. Which is why when you have sexual intercourse, you immediately automatically have a soul tie to that person. Okay? Um, and this video is not about that topic, but for those who are pondering that or want to challenge that, go study in like the book of like Genesis, okay? When Isaac and Rebecca got married, is there anything about rings or a wedding ceremony or does it just say that he basically took her to bed? He took her to bed, okay? Yes, your salvation can be incomplete. And yes, even if, you go all the way with Jesus, and I, I, I really can't comprehend how anyone would, would do this. But even if you go totally in with Jesus, you're intimate, you make him Lord, you put his will above yours, and then you turn around and go the opposite direction, and you renounce him as God, you can lose your salvation. Okay? And again, I'm going to circle back to 1 Samuel, where it says that the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Okay, now again, you can argue, you can argue every single thing I've said ever, you know, but whatever, you know, it, anyone can argue anything, but whether they're right or not is a different question, okay, different matter. Um, but anyway, that's the point that God wanted me to make, and since this person and I were kind of going back and forth in the comments, I figured I might as well use this as an opportunity for teaching, for the edification of whoever else, okay. But that, that's the analogy that God told me to use, okay? Is if that bride doesn't go home with that groom and consummate that marriage, the marriage isn't, um, Holy Spirit, what's, what's a better word? The marriage isn't validated. It's not valid. It's not justified. It's not fulfilled. It's not finished. It's not completed, okay? Which, again, going back to, what the, the, the original uh, Greek in that verse in Philippians, what does it say? To finish, to achieve. Okay? So, take it to the Lord. I exhort you in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. Go have some intimacy with the Lord. Okay? That's the equivalent of what your prayer closet, of what the secret place is. It's the equivalent of here on earth, a man and a woman going to bed, a, a husband and wife going to bed, okay? You need to be in prayer, and prayer is not just, oh Lord, can I have a nice new car? Prayer is a back and forth communion. It is a conversation, completely raw, completely honest. You speak to the Lord about everything. <laughs> What, what you believe, what you don't believe, what you fear, what you desire, your frustrations, your joys, okay? And the Lord speaks to you. And sometimes you initiate it and sometimes he initiates it. But you need to be listening, right? That's why we have two ears and one mouth, right? We need to be listening. And that's something that goes for everything, whether it's with other people horizontally or vertically with God. You need to be listening to the Lord. Do you do that? There's so many people who are carnal Christians. They are in the inner court. They've received him as their savior. And they'll sit here and argue intellectually, scripture, scripture, scripture. But they don't actually cultivate any intimacy with the Lord. There was a guy a few months ago. I was trying so hard to get through to him. And this guy, it's like I might as well just bang my head against a wall. Um, we were talking about something very specific, which is irrelevant. But, you know, and, and so... He was arguing one side of it, and I was arguing another. And I said, well, okay, bottom line. I said, did you ask the Lord about this? Well, I don't have to ask God because I know. Da -da 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 -da. That's, that right there is the, is the distinction between those who are in the inner court and those who are in the Holy of Holies. The people who say, oh, I don't have to ask God. I already know. Look at me, blah, blah, blah. That's pride, okay? That's, first of all, that's pride. If you are, refuse to go have a conversation with God about anything, that's pride. Humble yourself and go have a conversation with the Lord. 
Transition yourself from the, from the inner court into the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies is where the Lord is, okay? Now, I'm not saying that, again, I believe what the Lord told me is that everyone, everyone, everyone can hear God the Father's voice. When he really wants to speak to you, you can hear God the Father's voice. I believe that when you receive the Holy Spirit and you're in, or excuse me, when you're in, when you receive Jesus as your Savior, that you get the Holy Spirit, like not just, not just upon you, but in you, okay? I do believe that you get like the volume turned up with the Holy Spirit, but you don't really get to hear Jesus's voice, Yeshua's voice, until you are in the Holy of Holies, until your heart posture changes and, you're, and you now decide, Lord, I want intimacy with you. I want to hear your voice. I want to uh, submit to your will above my will. I don't want to live my life according to me. I want to live my life according to you. You tell me what to do, Lord, and I'll do it, okay? If you have this attitude, this posture of heart that, oh, I don't need to pray about it, then you're probably in the inner court. You're probably a carnal Christian, okay? And you need to complete your salvation. You need to finish your salvation. You need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, okay? Fear of the Lord means reverence. It means respect. It means you humble yourself. It means you get rid of this, you, you yes, Holy Spirit. You ditch this mindset that, well, God gave me an intellect for a reason. And so I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, there's a lot of people. T take a look at the Pharisees. They thought they knew everything and they couldn't even recognize the Messiah when he was in front of them. Okay. You got to ditch this mentality of that. Oh, I know, I know, I know. No, you go to the Lord and you ask him, Lord, I think I know such and such. Am I correct? Is there further revelation? Is there something here that maybe I am missing that I'm not fully comprehending? You humble yourself. You allow for the, him to speak to you and you allow that maybe, maybe you don't know it all. Maybe you don't have it all figured out. Maybe you only have a piece of the puzzle. <sighs> Holy Spirit, is there anything else you want me to say, Lord? I think that's it. As always, I want to remind everybody, always check the description boxes of my videos because quite often, quite frequently, um, I either forget stuff and I put stuff in there or I'll put scripture or I'll put links to other videos, articles, resources, whatever, okay? Um, I did do a video a year or two ago about how once saved, always saved is a false doctrine. Maybe I will link that in the description box below. Um, I will also link the video where I talked about, you know, outer court, inner court, holy of holies. And I also did a teaching, I forgot to mention this in, in the last uh, video, but I also did a teaching last year. The Lord gave me this full comprehensive um, or very comprehensive um, revelation regarding the seven churches that Jesus addresses in the book of Revelation. And what they are is actually heart postures, okay? Um, I did a whole teaching on that. Like, I spent hours on it because I actually took the time to put it into an Excel sheet that you can download and all kinds of stuff. So I will put the links to all three of those videos and in the description box of those videos, um, or at least the uh, Seven Churches one anyway, you can download that or whatever. But um, if you're interested, I'll put that below, okay? As always, you're welcome to ask curious questions in the comments or via email. If you're gonna attack me personally, odds are I'm just gonna ignore you. I got caught up recently in the last two weeks with reacting again with people and I, I had to catch myself. I'm, I'm done doing that. I'm just going to ask the Lord before I even read anything, whether the person is Nephilim, because it's like, it's like eight, eight, nine times out of 10, the person is Nephilim. And if they're Nephilim, it's like, I know that they're just working for the devil and there's no point in me engaging them at all anyway. And I got sucked into that recently. So I apologize to everyone for that. But, uh, um, but yeah, if you have genuine curious questions, that is the way to be, you know, have a heart posture of curiosity 
Maybe you don't have all the information. Maybe you need more context before you jump to any conclusions or make any conclusions. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help people in terms of answering questions and, and so forth, okay? I bless you all in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth.